Assalamu alaikum dear students. Hope you are well with the purpose of Almighty Allah. Welcome to AIBS Home School. This is Fatma Sabin Sheikha, Assistant Teacher of National Audio Image Version School, Monish. Today I am going to take Home Science class for the students of class 7 on the topic of chapter 15, summary. I'm repeating today our topic is chapter 15, summary. Students, this is our 18th lecture and 18th homework. I'm repeating, this is our 18th lecture and 18th homework. Students, for today's class, take your home science book. We'll discuss about the summary of chapter 15. So let's begin. Chapter 15, name, cleanliness of clothes. Okay, we'll start our class with the discussion of the same one, name, removing stains. Removing stains from the clothes is a part of prior preparation of washing the clothes. So before washing our clothes, we have to remove the stains if there is any stain in our cloth, we have to remove it before washing the cloth. The removers that we use to remove the marks or stains from our cloths can be divided into two pairs. So in two pairs, we can divide our used removers. First one is small remover and second one is strong remover. Now we'll discuss about mild remover. Mild solution of oxalic acid, vinegar, acetic acid, baking soda, ammonia, borax, hydrogen peroxide, etc. are mild remover. So what are mild removers? Or if I ask you, can you name some of mild removers? You can answer mild solution of oxalic acid, vinegar, acetic acid, baking soda, ammonia, borax, hydrogen peroxide, etc. are called mild remover. Now we'll learn about strong remover. Soda for washing cloths, hydrochloric acid, thick solution of oxalic acid, jarbling water, chlorine, etc. are strong remover. So what are strong removers? Soda for washing cloths, hydrochloric acid, thick solution of oxalic acid, jarbling water, Chlorine, etc. are called strong removers. And we can't use a strong remover in a huge or big portion because it can damage our clothes. Okay, students, now we'll learn about general rules to remove stains from clothes. Please, students, take your home science book and open page number 158. Okay, first one, 57, here is one general rules to remove stains from cloths. And in page number 158, here we'll find some rules. So from this page, you have to read all this. This will be helpful for answering your MCQ and answering your creative question answers. I hope you read this at home properly. Now I'm going to explain about stain of blood. When cotton or linen cloth is stained with blood, the cloth should be soaked in cold water. Then wash with mild soap water. Use mild ammonium solution for all stained cloth, solution of soap for silk and woolen cloths. So by using this waste, we can remove our stain of blood from our clothes. Number two, stain of mud. Mud stain should be removed by soap water. Use potassium for manganese solution and oxalic acid solution if the stain is not removed with soap water. So it's very easy when if we use soap water, it can be removed. And for another way, we can use potassium for manganese solution and oxalic acid if the stain is not removed with soap water. Now, students will discuss about lesson two, removing other stains. 
pressed in steam. Keep a blotting paper on the dusting area of the clock. Then sponge the area with a round shaped pinch of cotton soft with methane spirits. Then rinse water. In this way, you can remove ink stain from our clothes. And from your book, you'll get some more ways that by that you can remove ink stain. Now, sticky extracts from grain and flour. Pour well water onto the stain and then wash with soap. Don't use soap if the top is stained with black berry. So, if there is any sticky excess from grain and flour in your cloth recipe, you have to pour well water onto the stain slowly because well water is can be harmful for us. Wash with soap. First, you have to wash with soap, but we can't use soap water if the stain is with blackberry. So, you need to be careful about this. Now, we'll discuss about tea or coffee. Now, we are going to discuss about tea or coffee. For cotton or linen cloth, first wrap borax solution or lime juice. So, for cotton or linen cloth, we have to wrap borax solution or lime juice in one. Then, we have to dry it under the sun. For silk or woolen cloth, we have to use hydrogen peroxide solution. So by using this waste, we can remove stain of tea or coffee from our cloths. Now stain of turmeric. For cotton or linen cloth, we have to first wash with warm water. First we have to do what? Yes, we have to wash with warm water. Then we have to use soap. After that, we have to lay the cloth on the grass. Then we have to dry the cloth under the sun. And this way is for cotton or linen cloth. And now for other cloths, we have to we have to give a few drop of hydrogen peroxide and have to wait for a while. After that, we have to wash with water and then we have to dry the cloth. Now, iron stain. If there is any iron stain in our cloth, we have to rub a pitch of lime for new stain and salt with lime for old stain. If we find any stain and is it if it is new stain of iron, we have to wrap a piece of lime on the cloth. And if the stain is old, we have to use salt with lime on the cloth. In this way, we can remove iron stain. Now, I am going to explain the stain of sweat. You know, students, every day we have to work a lot and the weather is sent in our favor when it is summer day, we, we used to face sweat. So for day of sweat, we have to do for linen and cotton cloth, we have to wash with soap water. For old stain, we have to use ammonia solution or mild hydrogen for oxide. Then we have to lay the cloth soap. After that, we have to rinse it with water. Okay, for dyed cotton or linen cloth, we have to soak it in mild hydrogen peroxide plus sodium hyposulfite. Next, stain of cooked food. For white or permanent colored cotton cloth, we have to wash with soap. And we have to Dry the cloth under the sun. For silk and woolen cloth or colored cotton cloth, we have to wash the cloth with soap water. And after this, we have to clean with 10% potassium per magnetic solution. So, this is the perfect way to remove good food stain from our cloths.
Now, lesson 3 prior preparation of washing plus washing silk clothes. To complete the whole process of washing, we need to take some steps as a part of prior preparation. These steps are checking the label and selecting the clothes, repairing the clothes, removing the stains, selecting soap and other materials, keeping necessary equipment ready to use, making plan for washing the clothes, etc. So by following these ways, we can take prior preparation of washing clothes and if we follow this, our clothes will be neat and clean. And students from your test, you can elaborately know about all these points. I hope you will read the text and will learn about all this. We have to follow some rules while washing silk clothes. So from this you also come to know about the ways of washing silk clothes. Now lesson 4, name washing woolen clothes. Okay students, so like silk clothes we need to be careful while washing woolen clothes. So I hope you have your textbook and open page number 164 and from 164 to 165 it means you can see the book lesson 4 washing woolen cloths from 164 to 165 you have to read the text and from this you will come to know the ways of washing woolen cloths and you have to maintain some rules while washing woolen clothes. Please read this at your home. Now students will learn about lesson 5 applying starch on cloth. The substance that we use to make the cloth stiff is nothing but starch which consists of carbohydrate. For example, rice starch, wheat, arrowroot, barley, blender, carbohydrate, etc. While applying starch, we have to follow some rules of starch. So we can use the starch in our class, but we have to follow some rules while applying starch in our class. Lesson 6, iron the class. We can make our clothes flat and smooth to increase the beauty and tightness by pressing them with a heated iron. There are three types of iron in our country. They are cool iron, iron of brown, iron sheet, electric iron. Students, in chapter 15, go to page number 168. You can see the picture. Here is the pictures of cool iron, iron made of brown iron, electric iron. So here is the definitions of all these arrows and you can read all this from your text. We need ironing board, a blanket or a bed sheet and sleep foam with iron while ironing the clothes. So if you want to iron your clothes, you need uh, iron and iron with ironing board, a blanket or bed sheet and sleep board. So with the help of all this, you can easily iron your clothes. We must have to follow some rules of ironing. Yes, you must have to follow some rules of ironing, otherwise it can hurt us. We can be hurted by ironing. Okay, now it's time to provide your homework. Your homework will be 10 MCQ. Students do 10 MCQ from chapter 15 and write only answer. And don't forget to write lecture number and homework number with the submission date at the top of the corner of your copy. Our lecture number is 18 and homework number is also 18. And the submission date will be the date of Sunday because on every Sunday you have to submit your list of your copies. Students, do your homework in your SW copy. Guardians or anyone else can submit your SW copies on every Sunday and can collect your previous copies on next Sunday. You need to be serious because you will get your CT, diary, and SP marks on the basis of the submission of your SW 
the puppies. That's all for today. Hope you have understood today's topic. Keep practicing at home and abide by your parents. Stay well and see you again.